Greetings everyone. In this exercise we are going to learn how to use array formulas in Excel. Array formulas are incredibly powerful. They allow you to uh, use uh, columns or tables of numbers as arguments in your formula and it's kind of like doing vector algebra. You can multiply one column by another column and the result of that multiplication is a new column uh, with the first two columns multiplied together or subtracted or any way you want. So basically, I, you know, in a nutshell, it allows you to do kind of vector algebra uh, inside Excel. So it's particularly useful for engineering applications, but uh, just a number of general purpose applications as well. So to illustrate some of the things you can do with array formulas, we're going to use this uh, simple little table of information. Um, we have here uh, a table listing a set of products and uh, in the first column we have the product number and the second column we have the number of units and then uh, we have uh, some additional columns. These two columns in green uh, show the wholesale and resale price of individual uh, units. Uh, for that each product and then we are going to use uh, columns E and F to calculate uh, the total sale price you know basically the number of units times the price for both wholesale and retail price uh, and we're going to learn a little bit about um, um, array formulas along the way now before we begin uh, we are going to name our columns because when you're using uh, array formulas, uh, it's going to be a little easier and more intuitive if we just name the columns. Now, we have another video where we learned how to name cells. And as I mentioned, then you can name a range of cells, not just an individual cell. For example, I'm going to select this column here and go up and call this units. So now I can refer to that entire column in a formula by using that name. And uh, for the uh, wholesale price, let's do uh, 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 P underscore W. And for the retail price, let's do uh, P underscore R. And for the wholesale total, I'm not sure we'll use this in a formula. We'll do it anyway. T underscore W. And... Uh, uh, T underscore R. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> uh, one of the ways you can use array formulas is to just kind of simplify your uh, simple algebraic calculation. So, if I'm going to calculate the wholesale price, um, yeah, the simplest way to do that is say equals wholesale price times excuse me, times the uh, number of units. And uh, likewise, for the retail price, you do the uh, retail. Oh, I need to start over and do that. I thought I could copy that over. That didn't work. So equals, oh, here we go. Equals uh, number of units times the retail price. And then you copy that down and you're done. So that's the standard way of doing that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it that way. That's the way I do it myself most of the time. But uh, there actually is a way to do that same thing using um, array formulas. So for example, I, I can select that column before I enter the formula and then type equals units times uh, P uh, P underscore W. And then, so notice that uh, I'm writing a formula where I'm using the actual names of the columns as part of that formula, the names of these arrays. And uh, then to complete the entry of, a, of an array formula, this is very important, you hold down the control key and the shift key 
and then do enter and watch what happens first of all it, it uh, populates the entire uh, array that I have selected the entire range with the correct answers and if you look up in the formula bar you'll see it says equals units times PW so it also has those little curly braces which indicates that this is an array formula now the beautiful part here is when I click on that cell uh, what it it's it, it's kind of self-documented it's units times the wholesale price and so that's a little bit different than what we did in the first case and uh, um, it's kind of a nice simple way of representing the formula let's do the same thing here equals units times uh, P underscore R now you notice that one of the advantages of doing this is I don't have to uh, scroll over and select an entire column as I'm entering this formula so it can make the formula entry a little easier now once again I'm going to do control shift enter and there it is so we've populated these uh, two columns well that's that's kind of a cool trick but that in my opinion that doesn't uh, uh, fully illustrate all the benefits and advantages of array formulas so to uh, to explore this option more we've got a, a number of exercises down here at the bottom so first of all <clears throat> Uh, calculate the total wholesale price the sum of the num units times the wholesale price do not use the values in column E so in other words if for some reason I wanted to calculate the sum of this column here times this column here without creating this intermediate column now if I have this column I just take the sum of it but what if that didn't exist in fact um, you know to illustrate our point we could just delete those two columns right and uh, now I say okay I want to calculate the total wholesale price as the number of units times the individual wholesale prices uh, I'm going to do that using an array formula and we're just going to say equals sum uh, units times uh, P underscore W and uh, so again it's what it's going to do when I do control shift enter it's gonna uh, the two arguments here are arrays so we're saying take this array multi the units array multiply it by the wholesale price array and what that's going to do it's going to create an, an, a new array uh, in inside the Excel's internal memory and that array is going to be the same size each of these individual arrays but each entry in that array is going to be uh, the units times the wholesale price. So the first entry will be 4 times 25. The second entry will be 2 times 100. So that array is sitting there as part of this calculation. And then we say, OK, pass that intermediate array to the sum function. And then that will return a single value. So we'll just do Control Shift Enter here. And we've got that in one fell swoop. So uh, same likewise we can do the equals the units or excuse me the sum of uh, units times uh, uh, P underscore R control shift enter we've got the sum of this column times this column uh, total profit what is that the sum of the retail totals minus the wholesale totals now I, I deleted the those other two totals a minute ago so we're gonna but that's okay we can use uh, um, we can use an Excel or an array formula to, to do all of our calculations so I'm gonna say sum uh, equals sum and I'll say <clears throat> uh, units times P underscore W minus units times P underscore R and uh, control shift enter so there's your total profit looks like you're uh, oh wait a minute I, I did that backwards I should have done so I'm gonna go up here I'm gonna change that it should have been the retail minus the wholesale for the profit 
And so when you want to edit uh, an array formula, just come up to the formula bar. But after you're editing, uh, you can't just hit enter. That'll give you an error message. You have to do, again, uh, control shift enter. And there we go. So now we have the, the correct profit. Uh, max markup, the maximum difference between the retail and wholesale prices. So I want to compare each of the entries in these two columns and find the and calculate the differences and find out which one has the biggest difference. And then to do that, I'm going to use the max function. And we'll say p underscore r minus p underscore uh, w. So again, <clears throat> we're doing array algebra. We're saying take this array here and subtract this array, and the result is going to be a new array of the same size where the first entry is 39.99 minus 25, the second entry is 159.99 minus 100, and so forth. And then we're, we're going to pass that result to the max function and uh, control shift enter, and that is the maximum markup, which I would assume occurs right here, 799 minus 540. Average markup, this is kind of the same thing, equals average um, P underscore R minus P underscore, uh, underscore W, control shift enter, uh, max profit. Um, the maximum difference between the resale and the wholesale totals. Well, again, I deleted those totals, but no problem. Equals max, and we'll say uh, units uh, times P underscore R minus units times P underscore W. And I'll do control shift enter, and the max profit for an individual item was $1,039.96. And then finally, uh, this one will be a little trickier. The total high price profit, the total profit, retail total minus wholesale total for items where the retail price is greater than, let's see, uh, for some reason that uh, comment is a little bit hard to read there. Let me resize that. This is greater than $50. There we go. So the, the, the total profit were for items where the retail price is bigger than 50 bucks. So what we're going to say is um, we want to add up the profits, but only for items where the retail price is bigger than $50. So we're going to have to do a combination of an if statement and uh, a summation here of some kind. So we're going to do an if statement um, on the middle and then a summation on the outside. So we're going to say equals sum open paren if open paren p underscore r is greater than or equal equal to fifty dollars comma uh, we want to say uh, units times P underscore R minus units times P underscore W. So that's the, that's the profit, uh, comma. And now if that's false, um, we'll just do a zero. Close paren, close paren. Now before I hit control shift enter, let's, let's think about this a little bit. So we have an if statement that's operating on an array. And again, with an array formula, the, the key is all your arrays have to be the same size. That's really important. So we're marching through this retail thing. And um, uh, for every entry, we say, OK, is that price greater than 50 bucks? No. So enter a 0. And the next one, is that price greater than uh, 50 bucks? We'll say, yes, it is. So in that case, we're going to take for that line, the units times the retail price minus the units times the wholesale price. And that expression gives you the profit for that. And that gets entered 
into that slot in the array for that item. And you continue down this list, and for the for the cases where the price is bigger than fifty dollars, you get a non-zero entry. If it's less than fifty dollars, you get a zero entry. But in the end, you have this uh, ar array is calculated in Excel's internal memory, and it passes the result of all those calculations to the sum function, and it adds that up. So let's do Control Shift Enter. And boom, there we go. The total high price profit is $1,934.65. So there you have it, folks. Um, this is a, a, a really uh, effective way to, um, uh, to do calculations using vectors or arrays. And uh, again, as long as you remember, uh, work out in your mind how those calculations are done. You're multiplying or adding or subtracting uh, one array versus the other to create a new array. Then you can either use that array directly or you can pass it to a function that expects an array. And, uh, and you always have to remember to do Control Shift Enter. And uh, then you can unleash the power of array formulas.